Hello, in this video I'm going to talk in detail about verifying and possibly correcting polar alignment on the Skywatcher Star Adventure Star Tracker once you have already mounted the camera and everything else right here on the mounting platform and also framed up your target for deep sky astrophotography. I will show you how you can mount the reticle illuminator right here on the dovetail because it is possible and also how to deal with the fact that once you have framed up your target then most likely the polar clock on the reticle inside the polar scope will be off angle. Okay so without any further ado let's get started. Okay, so normally when you are setting up a star tracker like this Skywatcher Star Adventure, the general procedure is that you have your tripod, you mount this on your tripod, you point it generally at north or south, depending on which hemisphere you are actually located at. Then you dial in your elevation right here, you look at the correct celestial pole. I'm going to be focusing mostly on the north celestial pole because northern hemisphere is where I am, so I have the most experience with Polaris and dealing with that. But if you are on the southern hemisphere, I think to some extent you can also apply the principles that I will share with you in this video. So I'm going to be looking at Polaris, I'm going to be crouching behind the camera if I can see Polaris, which in deep sky astrophotography is kind of a requirement to actually look through the scope and do a precise polar alignment versus only the coarse polar alignment that I covered in my recent video right here. So you are pointing at the North Celestial Pole, you are seeing Polaris, you are roughly pointed at the exact spot where Polaris is. You take the reticle illuminator, which is a separate accessory that actually comes with the box if you bought the Star Adventure Pro Pack like I did. You can stick it inside here and you can turn it on and then you can look through the polar scope and you can actually see where Polaris is and use those two screws to fine align your azimuth and also use this screw to fine tune your elevation and that way you can place Polaris exactly where it should be on the polar clock. You can use the SAM console mini app on your smartphone, on your iPhone or Android phone that I have shown in my previous videos. And by the way, I have a whole separate video about how to set up the star tracker, how to set up everything, how to look for the polar scope, what to see from the polar scope, how it should be aligned with regards to Polaris and with regards to the reticle inside the scope. A whole video about this is right here. If you haven't checked it out, I can highly recommend that. So in general, at this step, if you have Polaris at the exact spot on the polar clock inside the reticle where it should be, you have to take this off you have to take this illuminator off in order to actually mount the dovetail and the declination bracket, the counterweight, the camera and everything. So once you do that, yeah, let me actually mount it here. So once you do that, basically once you start adding weight onto the tracker, you're going to be fiddling around this mount. You're going to be mounting stuff here, unscrewing, screwing in, mounting more weight and more weight, the counterweight, the shaft, the counterweight itself, etc, etc. The more you add to this tracker, the more you fiddle around with it, you need to undo the clutch also in order to actually frame up your target. Because if you are doing deep sky astrophotography, it is not recommended to use a ball head right here. So you have to use this axis of rotation and also the declination axis of rotation right here in order to actually frame up your target and if you don't know how to do that how to do that without the ball head I also have a separate video about it you can check it out right here well basically you end up in a situation where the right ascension axis is kind of rotated like this you are pointed of course this is pointed still north but this is off angle this is off angle a little bit and you are pointed at your target and now it's time to verify that the polar element that you did beforehand didn't got screwed up by all the adjustments and mounting stuff right here and chances are that it did because the wedge of the star adventure it's not the best design you know there's this plastic gear right here and if you add more weight chances are that it will sink in a little bit so most likely the elevation will be a little bit screwed up once you add more and more weight onto the tracker. So verifying and correcting polar alignment at this final stage before actually starting taking your photos is very, very crucial, especially with long focal length. But the problem is that once this dovetail is actually mounted here on the mounting platform, then the radical illuminator doesn't fit here anymore. I mean, there is an opening here so you can look through that. You can actually look through the dovetail, but there is no way to simply mount this illuminator. So how am I supposed to see the reticle inside the scope? Well, it turns out that actually this reticle illuminator comes in the box with this little plastic element. It looks like this. It was in the Ziploc bag along with the illuminator. At first I didn't know what it was and it turns out that if you mount it the correct side it actually fits the illuminator inside. So I have this adapter right now and right here with this on if I take the tracker 
I can actually mount it right here on the dovetail itself. I need to position it correctly so it actually aligns with the scope. And now if I turn it on, I can look through the scope. I have the illuminator on so I can see the reticle while I have already everything mounted on the tracker. Pretty cool and really, really handy in order to verify and correct your polar alignment at this final stage. So you look through the scope and what do you see? Well, if Polaris stayed on the circle on the polar clock, it means that probably the polar alignment is okay because the way it works is that the circle inside the reticle is the trajectory of Polaris because you are pointed at the North Celestial Pole and Polaris is not exactly at North Celestial Pole. It's very close and the circle inside the polar clock inside the reticle is the exact circle that Polaris is circling around this North Celestial Pole. So if you rotate the right ascension axis, Polaris should stay on this circle. So if it does, Chances are that the polar alignment is okay, but it could happen that it moved in a different portion of the circle, not exactly where it is supposed to be. So I think it's always a good idea to verify the alignment and make sure that Polaris actually sits on the spot on the polar clock where it should be. So you look through here and the polar clock is probably off angle. What I mean is that if you are doing your polar alignment, you look in the SAM console mini app, you verify where Polaris should be, the polar clock should be positioned you know, you need to undo this clutch and you need to position it in such a way. You need to position it in such a way that the polar clock inside the reticle is aligned vertically. So 0, 6 is a vertical line and 3, 9 is a horizontal line. And that way you know how to reference what you see in the app with what you see from the scope. But if this right ascension axis is actually a little bit turned because you have framed up your target, then the polar clock is also off angle. So one thing you can do is you can kind of imagine that it was straight up and where Polaris should be, but it's going to be more or less accurate. But the better option is actually to use those dials on the back. Those dials were actually designed in order to be able to find the correct place on the polar clock to place Polaris without the use of any external apps or anything like this. So one of them is called date graduation dial and the other one is time graduation dial. I honestly don't know which is which. You can look it up in the manual of your Skywatcher Star Adventure. I don't use them in such a way because I use the mobile app, but this is what they were designed for. But you can actually use it to your advantage because the bigger one, the outer of those dials, is actually affixed to this tracker unit in itself. And the smaller one rotates along with the scope. So if I undo this clutch and if I rotate it, as you can see, the outer one stays in the exact same spot, but the smaller one is rotating along with the scope. And we can actually use that to our advantage because guess what? The smaller dial can also be adjusted. I can rotate it freely. So what I can do, let's assume that I have this tightened and I have framed up my target. What I can do is I can just rotate the smaller dial in order to align the zero on the other dial with some reference point on the smaller dial. For instance, the zero is between 12 and 1. So I am aligning it like this. And now if I undo the clutch, if I rotate the polar clock back to its place where it should be for polar alignment, then I know that if I get back to this place on those dials when those two lines meet, this is my reference point, that I know that I am again back in my framing, that I have meticulously framed up my target like uh, Andromeda Galaxy or whatever. So I'm undoing this clutch and making sure that my polar clock is straight up, you know, vertical and horizontal, then I'm doing any required correction to the polar alignment. So I'm using these two screws for azimuth and this one for elevation. And what you need to do is actually go back to the SAM console mini app and look it up and look up at which spot on the polar clock should Polaris be right now. Because chances are that between your first alignment and the place that you are right now, after mounting everything, maybe you need to go to the car, find the correct lens, balance everything, find a target which can take a while. Chances are that that Polaris actually moved with regards to the original position that you were checking. So just make sure to recheck that in the app right now at this time when you're correcting the polar alignment, then make sure to place Polaris at the correct spot where it should be right now on the polar clock. One thing that I am notoriously repeating in every single video is that if you are done with adjusting your azimuth, make sure that both of these screws are screwed in all the way as they can go because that way it is actually firmly, the base is actually firmly in place with regards to this green stuff that goes onto the tripod. If one of those screws is not screwed in all the way, there's actually a little bit of rotation that it can do on its own. 
you probably hear the sound and you can actually rotate it like this. So the easy way to verify that it's actually firmly in place is to just take one hand on the tripod and the other hand on the mount and try to rotate it. It shouldn't be able to rotate even a slightly bit. So that way you know that you have everything tightened, you have everything framed up and then you can just undo this clutch very very gently and go back to our reference point. So looking at those dials, I'm just aligning zero with what I had before. So somewhere um, here that I'm redoing the clutch, tightening everything. Again, be very, very gentle not to throw off your polar alignment at this stage. And now you can start shooting. You can uh, take this off or maybe you can just leave it in. And I honestly just leave this illuminator in and once in a while, like once every half an hour, I go to the tripod and I try to crouch and look for the polar scope. And if Polaris is staying on the circle, if it's moving along the circle inside the polar clock, then I know I am absolutely certain that my polar alignment is spot on and whatever I am capturing is going to be a success. Let me jump in here real quick to share something else because there's actually another method of doing that that is way way better and actually more precise than what I have just shown you. It involves the use of a third-party paid app that costs like a few bucks so if you don't want to spend that you can use the method that I have just shown you that's why I decided to keep it in the video but there's actually another way of doing that with the use of this app that doesn't involve the maneuver of undoing the clutch resetting the reticle to the straight up position and then resetting the right ascension axis back again on your target you can avoid doing all that with the use of this app which is called Polarscope Align Pro and I'm going to show you this process right now so hang in there what you can do is actually take a look at the back of the scope again right here if you undo the clutch and start rotating the scope you will notice that right here there is this little notch and you can use this notch in order to align this date graduation dial, the inner one is actually <laughs> date graduation, I looked it up, and the outer one, the bigger one, is called the time graduation dial. So you take the date graduation dial and you align the zero right here with this little notch. And once you do that, you can actually, with the clutch undone, you can rotate everything. And you rotate everything in a way to align this big line between the 10 and 11 with the zero on the time graduation dial. And if I quickly tighten the clutch right here, as you can see, the line between 10 and 11 is aligned with the zero on the time graduation dial. And right now, at this exact position, the radical inside should be straight up. So the vertical and horizontal with regards to what you see. And if that is not the case, this is the case in terms of my tracker. If that is not the case, that means that your tracker is not properly calibrated when it comes to the position of the radical inside the scope. If you want to recalibrate it, I will leave links down below in the description with more information about that. So assuming that it is properly aligned, what you can actually do right now, don't touch the date graduation dial and you have to actually do that way before you even mount anything here in the process of the preliminary alignment, the first polar alignment that you do without even mounting anything like a detonation bracket right here on the tracker. So make sure that this position is right here. So make sure that the notch on the scope is aligned with the zero on the date graduation dial. And right here, what you can actually do is that once you undo the clutch and actually frame up your target, which means that the right ascension axis is going to get rotated, which means that the dials, the date graduation dial and the time graduation dial will actually change the position with regards to themselves. So once you are on the target, obviously you are tightening the clutch, you are on the target and what you can do right now is you can actually read what is the position of this line on the date graduation dial, the one between 10 and 11, with regards to what you see on the time graduation dial. And you can read sort of what time does it indicate. The time graduation dial is from 0 to 23 and it reflects like the military notation of time if you don't know what it means and you are on the AM PM. Basically like 11 PM is 2300 hours military time. So this is basically like the full 24 hours around the clock on the day. This is what the time graduation dial indicates. And right here, as I can see, it shows me that my hour indication is six. And this scale on the time graduation dial, one step is 10 minutes. So you can read in those increments. Like for instance, from here you have five, five, 10, five, 20, five and a half, 540, 550, and 6. And you can use that information to input into the Polar Scope Align Pro app. So let me show you how that works. 
Okay, so right here I have the Polarscope Align Pro app opened and as you can see you have the familiar Polar Croc inside here. And what you can actually do right now is click on the second icon from the right down at the bottom, this one with the reticle with this kind of an arrow. And if you click that, you can actually input here your right ascension axis rotation. So we read beforehand that our right ascension rotation was six hours on the time graduation dial indicator. So we just input six here and check this out. The entire reticle is being rotated. Maybe it's not obvious because it just rotated by 90 degrees, but if, if I input here something like two and 30 minutes, for instance, you can see how it gets rotated with the regards to the original position. And now you basically, what you just did is that you aligned the rotation of the reticle right here in the app with the rotation of the right ascension axis on your tracker. And right here, of course, you see where Polaris should be located on the dial to indicate that you have the proper and precise polar alignment and you don't need to go through the maneuver of undoing the clutch, resetting the reticle to the straight up position, realigning your polar alignment there and then going back to the target. You can avoid all that which could actually throw off your polar alignment even after fine tuning the polar alignment. So this is kind of pointless. You can do all that with the rotated polar scope right here on this app and the reticle inside your polar scope that is exactly rotated at the same angle as the indicator right here in this app. So that's why it is so helpful. All right, let's go back to the video. Also, there is one more thing that you should do is that once you have corrected your polar alignment and you get back to the original place of this right ascension axis in order to get back to the target that you have framed up, chances are that after doing those slight polar alignment adjustments, you're actually not exactly framed up the way you were. So the target that you are photographing probably shifted slightly inside the frame. So at this stage, just use those two arrows in order to rotate the right ascension axis and also use this screw in order to do the fine adjustments in the declination axis in order to make sure that the target gets back to the place that you wanted it to be inside your frame. All right, guys, that's basically for me for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to leave it a like down below. I would really appreciate it. And also, like always, leave a comment down below if any part of the video was confusing or anything. I'd pretty much try to answer every single comment I get on YouTube. And also, if you want to pick up the adventure or any part of the adventure, any kind of accessory that I have shown here, make sure to check out the links down below. Those links are to Amazon and you can pick up any of that for yourself and also consider subscribing to my channel if you're new here because i post pretty much every single week and i cover a lot of things related to photography in general astrophotography and also filmmaking like my channel is all about things you can do with your camera and i will have a bunch of videos on my channel so browse through my channel you will probably find something interesting in there but right now if you want to check out more interesting stuff about the skywatcher star adventure and astrophotography in general definitely check out these two videos and also subscribe here like i mentioned and see you next time clear skies bye bye